brains evolved in order to make bodies move around in the world, the body of the animal move around in the world and interact with the objects in, in that world uh, in order to improve its chances of survival and, uh, and reproduction. And that's really fundamentally what brains are for. So if we try and simulate, uh, simulate the brain and try and understand it and we try and build models of it in this disembodied way, I think that's the wrong way to go. So from a, uh, the perspective of a computer scientist and a, and a roboticist, what we need to do is not just build a computer model of the brain, but we need to embody that computer model. So effectively, that means trying to build robots and make your models control robots and make robots move around in the world and interact with things. And we'll see an example of that in the, in the next video, uh, which is due to um, Tony Prescott from the University of Sheffield uh, and, some, and colleagues from the, from the University of Bristol. Now this, uh, uh, this robot, which is called Shrewbot, now you can see that this robot, which is slightly scary, um, has got whiskers, and, uh, and it's uh, the latest in a, in a generation of, uh, 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 of, of a series of robots uh, that were produced by this group where, where they were studying whiskers, so they had a kind of rat uh, bot before this. Um, and uh, they discovered some very interesting things. So they were interested in uh, the rat barrel cortex. So that's a little bit of the rat's cortex, which is to do with processing the sensory information that comes in from, uh, from whiskers. And what they really uh, quite convincingly showed was that you cannot understand a bit of rat barrel cortex by studying it in vitro, studying it in isolation from the uh, signals that are coming in from these actual whiskers and in the context of a big sensory motor loop whereby the, uh, the whiskers touch things and, that, uh, and then the sens sensory information comes from the whiskers as they brush against things and then that causes the rat to change the way it's whisking. So if it touches something, so if the rat is whisking away like this and it touches something, was that a good impersonation of a rat whisking? And, it's, and it touches something on this side of its body, then it will change the way it's whisking on that side of the body in order to try and sense more accurately exactly what's going on there. And that's all part of the big sensory motor circuit. And in order to really understand uh, what the, the, all of those nerves, what those neurons are doing in a context like that, or any context, you've really got to understand that whole sensory motor loop. So if we're going to try and build computer models of the brain, then I think we really need to, uh, to embody them in robots. Similar journeys that have each of the 